Hi guys, um, I'm 40 years old and I've got gout, the uh, 17th century disease of old men. I've also got neuropathy in my hands, which is just pins and needles, but it's really annoying. Um, my uh, mental health is really bad right now. Uh, I've got headaches um, because I drink too much. So this video is about a warning about not starting to drink alcohol again or having it as a transfer addiction after you've had a gastric bypass. I won't go on about my journey, I'm going to write it in the link below so you can see my journey, but basically I'm four years out now. Um, I've struggled to keep the weight off because of the alcohol. So you'll see lots of videos of me being like, oh yeah, into the health side of things, and I can be during the daytime, I might be eating the right things during the daytime, but it gets to seven o'clock and the kids are gone to bed. I'll crack open a bottle of wine quite often. Now it's, it's got much worse lately um, because it's the summer holidays and before that there was lots of events, it was my husband's birthday, blah de blah de blah. Um, so before that I'd say probably drinking half a bottle to a bottle of wine of an evening, just watching the telly with my husband, it's not like a party animal or anything. We don't go out that much actually but when I do go out, because I suffer still from quite a lot of um, anxiety, I know I seem really bubbly but that's part of the problem. People expect me to be really bubbly every time I leave the house. So if I'm going to an event or a party, then I'll usually drink wine before I go. Uh, pop open a bottle of Carver or Prosecco. So it's not like I'm drinking like vodka or anything because I can't be an alcoholic. Uh, so yeah, I have maybe half a bottle of Prosecco when I go out, drink a can as I'm walking along. We live in Somerset. It's cider. Every Everything is about, there's a cider bar there. Oh, come to this, there's a cider bar there. Don't worry, you can have some cider when you're here. And cider just really sort of doesn't work well with me either. But um, So you have a bit of daytime drinking. The kids are on the bouncy castle. Everybody's doing it. It's fine. Um, so recently, there's been a lot of daytime drinking, followed by the usual evening drinking um, midweek. Then, you know, I, I thought it was a bit of a problem when I was getting to the let's try and have a dry day during the week kind of thing. I was like, mm, that's weird. You should you know, that'd be just normal to not drink a few days during the week. Um, but it had become a bit of a habit uh, to sit down and crack open a bottle of wine or my husband would have some beers. So like I, we wouldn't be sharing a bottle of wine. The bottle of wine would be my bottle of wine and he'd have his own beers. And often I'd finish my wine and then think, oh, I'll just go out and get some more because I can sort of thing. Uh, kids are in bed, so it's not drinking around the children either, so that's fine, you know. Um, okay, so cut a long story short, um, I mean, I'd already been feeling it, feeling it down. I'd missed my B12 injections as well, so I don't know if any of you guys get B12 injections, but I'd, completely just, I'd just been having hangovers, not remembering things properly, forgot completely about myself. Um, so then that's, I think, what has given me the a neuropathy in my hands. And I still can't get an appointment to get a bloody B12 injection for like another fortnight. So anyway. Um, so yeah, it was a it's a problem. I've struggled with addiction all my life, so I've been into drugs. I've had you know, and the alcohol, and and then the food, which is why I ballooned, and this is why I needed the gastric bypass surgery in the first place. So be careful. They tell you to watch out for alcohol after your surgery. You probably won't want to drink for ages, but then when you can, you'll think. Some people are really lucky and they they can't drink it. But and I, I was, my problem was I couldn't drink water. Water would really not sit well with me. Um, I tried a cider and black one day when I went to the pub and I thought, oh my god, I can actually drink this. I could drink a bit of ale, half a... And it started like that and slowly I realised I could have more and more and it was helping me to relax and I could be my fun bubbly self because when you're a big fat bubbly person, it's cool because you're like the big fat bubbly one, all of a sudden you get all these identity issues when you start to lose weight and you are actually like quite good looking and size 16 and stuff but you know, you don't want to put yourself out there because then that's just weird. Um, but with a bit of wine inside you, you can be like this persona that everyone expects you to be. My Instagram, uh, I'll post links to it, is just full of like pictures of me doing selfies, like holding a bottle of um, Prosecco or holding a glass of champagne or something. Or like, look at me with my alcohol, because that makes me cool. And I mean, it's not just me, everyone does it. But actually, it's not cool for me right now, because I've given myself a fucking disease. My liver might start failing. I could die if I don't take care of myself. I'm not getting the vitamins, all the vitamins, multivitamins I have, or I'm supposed to have. Firstly, I've been forgetting them. And secondly, if I do take them, it's not making much difference, because all the alcohol I'm having is killing the vitamins. I completely lost track of my healthy diet. 
Uh, I went on this 12-week weight loss plan, which would have been fantastic. And it's using Herbalife, which is a fantastic product. And it's actually helped me lose weight before surgery. But because I was having like all my Herbalife during the day and like all my calories were under and I was logging it all in, in um, my fitness pal. And then I'd have a bottle of wine, which is like or more, which is like up to a thousand calories. So I wondered why at the end of my 12 weeks, yeah, I did lose some weight, but it could have been a lot more. Uh, and I wasn't, I was feeling better because I'd started exercising. Now I can't even exercise. All my joints are hurting. I can't bend my knees, my ankles, the same kind of problems I had when I was obese. What the fuck is that all about? It's ridiculous. So listen, this, I am now five days sober. I couldn't do this before because it was in such a state. It just proves that I had a real problem. So I cut it. I just, I was told to cut, cut out slowly. I was having, say, 70 units to 100 units a week, and I'm meant to have 14. This is why it's a problem. Um, I didn't want people to judge me either. I might not probably post this till ages later. I'm just doing it now to get out of the way. Okay, so I cut out completely cold turkey, um, and it was really horrible. I had the shakes, headaches, itchy skin, which I've still got, um, sort of just aches and pains, low mood, anxiety. Because surprisingly, alcohol doesn't help with depression and anxiety because it's a depressant. Who knew that? <laughs> what I've been doing is trying to keep myself busy, trying to drink water, which I can just about drink now, teas, vegetable soups, using food to heal me. Everything I've done sporadically in bouts over the last few years, I'm going to put it all together and actually really try and take this seriously this time because... Sometimes I couldn't really see a reason. Okay, I've got to a size 16. Now, that's fine. I, You know, what's the point of even losing more? This time it's not about losing weight or how many pounds I've lost. This is about me healing my body and trying to be in optimum shape, optimum health now for me and for my kids for the future. Oh, God. Uh, so I'm having lots of anti-inflammatory foods because, as you know, after bypass, I can't really have ibuprofen. So all these aches and swellings and stuff, I can't even have anti-inflammatories for. So I'm having garlic and turmeric um uh all these herbs and spices that can help into my food i'm having lentils and vegetables and curly kale and spinach and green smoothies and my herbalife protein shakes which have also got loads and loads of vitamins in which are going to help me um trying to get water in me every which way i can um trying to cut out sugar as well because i think together that's going to help so I'm sorry this is a long video, but listen to me. If you can have, if you can go without never having alcohol again after your surgery and use having the surgery as your excuse and enjoy yourself without it, then I think that is the best way. If you can really try and stick to having small drinks and not having it very often and not relying on it as your new transfer addiction, then my friend, you have cracked it. So I'm not sitting here saying I'm going to be teetotal forever. I mean, at, my, at the moment, the only way I can do it is to try and think this is it. I'm never drinking again. Because people always say that. But ideally, I'd like to be able to go out and be that person who has a few glasses of um, champagne or whatever and enjoys it. Um, so far, money-wise, I've saved 50 quid this week just from five days of not drinking. So that's got to be good. Do comment. Do wish me luck. Um, I'm really, really scared I'm going to fail. I'm not crying now. I've spent five days crying. Um, I haven't got that much support around me. I haven't told many people because I'm ashamed and I'm worried that I'm going to fail. So you guys, maybe you don't know me, so I'm not so worried about what you're going to say. But um, nice comments would be great. Uh, and yeah, I will keep you updated. And, um, you know, I hope I just, this isn't my last video for my die of liver damage, because I've really got to do this. <laughs> I've got to do this this time.